My name is Andy Gracie. Um, I'm an artist, a UK artist, I'm working out of Spain for a few years, um, making work which kind of locates within this interesting, fuzzy science, art, technology triangular area that has been kind of working on for quite a few years now. So, this is a project called um, Drosophila Titanus, which is a project I've been working on for. I first kind of tested the project about two years ago, but for about a year continuously now I've been developing this phase of it and I will need to keep working on it for as many years as I have left to get close to what I want to do. Um, it's a project which brings together several of my interests in um, astrobiology, um, biology in general, kind of space bioscience, and the, the discoveries we're making about um, Earth-like planets in the rest of the, the galaxy. So, um, what I'm trying to do with this project is actually something impossible. Um, through a process of um, artificial selection and breeding, I'm trying to develop a new species of fruit fly, Drosophila, which would be theoretically capable of surviving on Saturn's largest moon, Titan. Drosophila, even though it doesn't look much like us, it shares 95% of the same genetic makeup as we do. So Drosophila have been used a lot um, in space. They've been on the Space Shuttle, in the International Space Station, and in biosatellites. To tell us about what happens to organisms like us um, in microgravity when they're exposed to cosmic radiation and things like this. So in terms of kind of post-terrestrial futures and existence and survival in space, then Drosophila tells us a lot about ourselves and our own possible futures in that respect. Titan is um, the, although it's very, very different from the Earth, it's considered to be the most Earth-like place that we know of so far, in as much that it has um, an atmosphere, it has a liquid cycle, it has weather, it has continents, it has tectonic activity and all these things. So there's kind of three significant factors there. That the one is that it's considered to be very like how the Earth was when it first began to form. Also that when the sun becomes this enormous red giant in seven billion years time, then Titan would be warm enough for kind of humanoid life to survive. And also there's this vague possibility that in this kind of under, under subsurface ocean that Titan has, that life might even be possible there because there's all the necessary things. So it interested me to bring together this, this organism that's very important to finding out about space futures and about this place which is like the Earth, but it's also it's not the Earth. It's this very mysterious and magical and strange place. By bringing together the Drosophila and the Moon Titan, it allows me to then kind of speculate about what possible organisms or forms of life might emerge and might be necessary to develop. What I'm doing so far in the bit we can see here is I'm actually working on the temperature adjustment. On Titan it's 180 degrees below zero, which you know, however much work I do, I will not be able to make flies that live in that. So, bit by bit, I'm going through steps to um, have an apparatus here which I can select flies which prefer lower temperatures, and then by breeding and selecting and breeding and selecting, I can push them into breeding stocks which are more tolerant of, of lower temperatures. Then I will also be working on experiments for um, higher air pressure, for different chemical compositions of, of, of atmosphere, for different circadian cycles, or different dark light cycles, and the actual quality of the light that's in the atmosphere. Um, there's different kinds of radiation as well I have to kind of work on. So there's quite a wide range of factors of experiments, and some things I still need to devise the way of how I'm actually going to do that. I'm not interested in genetically modifying them in the breeding, but I'm interested in genetically analyzing them to find out what kind of mutations or changes are happening in the genome as I begin to kind of really focus my own flies into a particular narrower range of uh, environments. What's interesting to me is to go through this very rigorous scientific process to get as cl close as I can. So, you know, as much as anything, this project is also a very, um, a very close investigation about what exactly this whole science and art relationship actually is. You know, by, in my opinion, you know, science and art actually limit each other. You know, science limits art and art limits science. For me, it's very difficult, it's very problematic, this idea of the two being practiced together. 
I believe that the dialogue between the two is much more important and interesting than actually trying to make the two work together. So by following this very systematic, scientifically rigorous process, I'm looking at how much artistic metaphor and ambiguity and poetry I can actually get out of that.